Hello and welcome to Gypsy in the Attic. I am Laura Nicole, your Gypsy in the Attic, and this is our second interview. I Can finally get what they call it that. What? 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 The Gypsy <laughs> in the Attic? Yes. No, okay. I just turned. It, I, just, I just had to turn it down because I thought to myself, oh, "Wait a minute! Now I get it." I'm like, "Why is she in the attic?" Then I was like, "Oh yeah, duh." I <laughs> like, Gypsy in the attic. Derp. Exactly. So, hey, at least um, at least I was faster on the draw than Nick Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have the same question from uh, another person who will be uh, interviewed next week, and so now you can see why I'm in the attic. This is where I record. I am the gypsy pirate, therefore I am the gypsy in the attic. Makes perfect and... sense. Makes perfect sense now. <laughs> this is episode 20, um, and I can hardly believe that I'm at episode 20. Um, and this week for my guests, I have the fabulous steampunk and other team of... T. Morris and Philippa Valentine. Pippin T. <laughs> Pippin T. And we also have their fabulous intern who has been coming out with some really great stuff lately, lately uh, Katie Plucky. Presky. Plucky. Yeah. She's, she's our plucky intern. She's our <laughs> plucky intern. Plucky? <laughs> oh, plucky. <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> Don't put adjectives in my mouth, T. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so, uh, basically, today we're going to be uh, talking a lot about uh, your guys' extensive experience in um, doing podcast novels, full cast uh, audio projects, um, and, of course, your latest projects. So, T, you've been asked this a lot, but I have viewers that don't know you, but you started out uh, the, the podcast novel genre. And my question for all of them is why? Why? Real simple. It was a it was a publicity stunt. It really was. Uh, the, the 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 short the short version of the long story is that uh, and actually because you're the gypsy pirate you'll you'll appreciate this. For my uh, very first book, Moravi, first book I've ever I've ever had published, uh, I had pirates crash my book launch. Oh, and no. uh, sword fighting ensued. In fact, I'm thinking, I'm thinking for the 10th anniversary of Moravi, I'm going to play. The, I'm, I'm going to put in the pod in, in one of my podcast feeds uh, the video that I have because uh, I did shoot the entire the entire launch, and it was it was it was a lot of fun. It was a heck of a lot of fun. Um, but my publisher over at Dragon Moon Press, something that all three of us, Katie, Pip, and I all share in common, uh, she came to me and she said, "Well, T, you you had pirates." Uh, crash your book launch, what are you going to do to top that? And I said, that's a good question. And at the time, I was listening to the few podcasts that were currently playing. I mean, Dragon Page, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Astro uh, Slacker Astronomy was another one with, uh, with um, uh, Dr. Pamela, oh, geez. Gay? Pamela Gay? Dr. Pamela Gay. And, um, and you know, I, I was listening to about five or six podcasts at the time, and that was nearly a quarter of what was out there. And I remember uh, calling Evo and uh, and Mike and saying, "Guys, I've got an idea, but I need your help on it. I want to podcast Moravi." Now they were both big fans of Moravi, and they were like, "You're going to podcast the entire book?" And I said, "Yes, one chapter at a time." And that was what started it. Uh, I think part of the reason that I I not only came up with this idea was was because I was listening to podcasts, but also I have a background in theater. My my degree was not in English. It wasn't in English literature. It wasn't even in, in creative writing. It was in theater and mass communications. So this to me was a, a great uh, step back to when I was a professional actor. And and I, I think that comes through in a lot of the different things that I've done, both as a uh, audiobook recorder as well as a uh, as a patio book recorder. Awesome. So, um, Pip, were you at all... Uh resistant or hesitant about starting to podcast your novels? Um, no, not really, because I was living in New Zealand a long way from any kind of market apart from sheep and uh, a few people. <laughs> and uh, so the idea of podcasting and reaching out to people beyond New Zealand was a huge draw. Um, I'd also done uh, speech and drama um, from when I was like eight years old. Uh, I think I was about 23 when I stopped doing it, uh, or I would have had to start teaching. So I stopped doing it, and uh, <laughs> so it was nice to be able to use those skills that I'd 
I hadn't used for a while, and I I just really enjoyed doing it once I started, you know, recording, and I wanted to get better equipment, and you know, the usual podcasting problem is that you know you 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 start spending money on mics and start uh, giving up doing anything because you just want to finish that one chapter for this week. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Which one uh, Which one of your books was your first podcast novel? Because I've listened to them all, but I don't know what order they came out in. Uh, Weaver's Web was first, then I did uh, Chasing the Bard and Digital Magic and then Where the Child? I think yes. Where the Child was the last one I yeah, did. Yeah, Where the Child was the last one you yeah, did. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Now, uh, KT, have you, um, before the short stories for Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences that you did, have you done any other podcast um, novels? Oh, yeah. Um, I podcasted my novel, Hapix, which came out with Dragon Moon Press as a full cast podcast. Very nice. Um, I'm just going to show my age here because I, I grew up with podcasts. No. Oh my god. <laughs> the podcast native. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like when I was in high school and I guess during my formative years, I was listening to all of these podcasts that were coming out, including Marie, including Chasing the Bard <laughs> and Digital Magic and what have you. Um so <laughs> more. It's well, my actually, turn to actually, talk. It's my turn to talk. <laughs> I, I know, but I'm gonna prompt you because you know, I can do I that because I am your I am your supervisor. <laughs> As as the intern, so intern, she listen up. Head. That's why you're being. I know. <laughs> um, Not conforming. You're, you're gonna you're, you're gonna you're gonna tell the story about about how uh, a podcast <laughs> how a podcast actually uh, influenced your uh, your education, right? I was then going to go on to say that for me, because I'd grown up with them, it seemed like the logical next step. Now that I had this finished novel that I wasn't quite sure what to do with. Um, and like I hadn't really, I'd had sent some queries out, but hadn't gotten a huge response. A lot of I like this, but it's not for me. I was like, oh, fine, I'll podcast it. And that's how I got um, into podcasting my novel Hapix. And then similar story to Pip. You know, you want to get the better mic, you want to finish that one chapter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so you all have done uh, full cast uh, patio novels. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've done the narration for your individual uh, novels. What do you prefer? Do you prefer the full cast or do you prefer a uh, single narration? I don't think you need to ask T. <laughs> no, I, no I, I mean, that's that's sort of the, the, the pro and, and the con. I prefer full cast. I, it's it's just more fun. It's mm-hmm. just a lot, a, a lot of uh, joy. Um, I remember... When I when I cut the the the, the finale the not, not the final chapter but the finale for um uh, for the case of the singing sword, I came down to my office at uh, eight o'clock in the morning on a, on a Saturday, and I did not leave my office. Oh, I mean, I did leave my office for 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 short breaks, but I did not leave my office until nine o'clock that night, and not only did time just fly by me, but the the end finale involved my best friend Ron. It involved Leanne Mabry. It involved uh, a lot of special effects, and oh, it involved Danny Cutler as well. Uh, another podcast, another another podcast machine from the back in the day, and the the end result I was I was more than thrilled with. I was I was just I was I was thrilled with it. But you know, in retrospect, I I, I look back on the time that I that I that I invested, and I'm very happy and very proud of. The, the patio books that I've done in the past, but I, I doubt very sincerely if I'll ever podcast a novel again because I know time. How, time. I know how I want it to sound. I know how I know I know what I want to do with it, but I I just don't have that, that kind of time anymore. And I don't think it's the return on investment that some people have made it out to be. Ooh. Okay, Controversial with <laughs> Well I mean when I started Weaver's Web it was very, very basic. And it was just me and I thought I was very creative putting music in it. And um, But then by the the last three were mostly full cast. But like T, I had a, a heck of a good time. I had uh, PG Hollyfield and, and Chris Lester and T and, and all sorts of people on Chasing the Bard, which was so much fun. But just the amount. I, didn't, I don't think I really anticipated how much extra work it was not just the the cutting the voices into the into the audio but also managing people that you're not paying um, right, and right. trying to get them to give you audio 
on a timely basis when you're not paying them. So you can't say, hey, where's that audio that I wanted, <laughs> you know? Um, so you can only push them so far. Mm -hmm. So, I, whoa, T just knocked the mic. How very professional of him. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, th I think that was the worst bit was actually trying to... I think I missed my my uh, deadlines a couple of times just because I, I couldn't, in all good conscience, <laughs> push people who have yeah. lives to do some do things like that. But I really in, enjoyed doing it, and uh, I think that the Tales from the Archives that we're doing for the ministry are our little way of getting just a little taste of that. And KT, what about you? I loved it. I loved doing full cast. Um, for me, what I do is, because I was in university at the time, I just used my friends who acted. So they'd come around and we'd record like in my house. So I had less of a problem getting audio for people because mm -hmm. I was there with them at the same time. <laughs> Supplying and them we... Doritos and stuff, yeah, right? There you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, see, my friend Blythe, because she is a working actress, I did pay her in wine. Oh, well, Everyone that's... else got eternal gratitude, Blythe gets wine. That's <laughs> how my system works. I've heard that's a great way to get actors. That's a, that's a, that's a, good, that's a good courtesy. You cry us with booze, and <laughs> that's all we want. We want booze and recognition and the opportunity to squee all over T and Pip when we first meet them with a bunch of mojitos. Um, <laughs> and that's what she gets. So we, we had a ton of fun. I loved it. I loved putting the music away. And doing Tales from the Archives, uh, recording the two stories that I did for T and Pip um, over the past month, it just reminded me how much I love it. But it's the yeah. same problem of time and return on investment. Mm. So for and me, think, oh. I'm trying to find ways to like get my day job interested in podcasts over ah. at the museum. <laughs> I'm glad that I may or may not have some plots because you know when I write stuff and she acts in stuff and we both work there. So, but just for myself, I I don't know that I could do another full cast novel. Yeah. I think short stories are definitely the way to go with that, um, especially if you can actually get the people in the same room together, um, kind of like you would do on a panel and have everybody have the microphones and do everything perfectly, but, um, you know, that might save on the time and get more cohesion going with the, with the dialogue. Well, I think mm -hmm. also that that it's a smarter investment when you when you do a, an anthology, and it, mm -hmm. and the reason why is that literally within a week you could you could uh, you can collect voices, you can uh, you can edit it, put it together, and you can release it. And and um, what's great about the short story is it's they're all they're all for the most part they are all self-contained stories. So people can listen to one episode and they, they get a beginning, a middle, and an end. Versus mm -hmm. if it's a podcast and they come in the middle of it, they got to get caught up. And uh, sometimes they may have to wait for part uh, for the next part, which is which is another problem that some people have. And, I, I mean, it's funny. I, I remember how Scott Sigler was a little taken mm -hmm. aback. He didn't realize the kind of, he said, he said, you know, I, I remember when he, when he said this, he said, you know, all these friends of mine, they're doing full cast audio. Well, you know what? Scott Sigler's going to do full cast audio. And then that was when Nocturnal came out, and I remember he said, "Man, I never want to do that again." <laughs> uh, um, but the but the thing is that uh, with um, uh, the other big investment with short or, or the, the the smarter investment with short stories is that when people finish the finish the novel, they they go, "Wow, this was great! I can't wait for the next one!" And automatically we react with, "Well, you know, there's a podcast, right, with short stories," and mm -hmm. people just devour them. And then for people who are like, you know, I'd like to invest, I'd like to, I'd like to read Phoenix Rising, but, you know, do you have any sample chapters or anything like that? Well, we introduce them to the podcast, and we go, here's a, here's an introduction to the world. What you, what you get here is what you're going to get when you, when you read our books. And so it works both ways, and it's just, it's mm -hmm. just a, for us, it's been a smarter investment of, of, uh, of, of our time and our talents. Awesome. Um, so. What is the the your favorite character that you've gotten to voice? Hmm. hmm. You want to take the lead on well, this? Well, I, I think my <laughs> I think my favorite character would probably be from Chasing the Bad would be Puck. I don't know why I just enjoyed him. Very Everybody much. loves to be Puck. Everyone loves to be Puck, and then I got I manipulated my voice just a, a fraction to make him sound a little more Puckish, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> That was lots of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then when he went to digital magic, he became his his his, he became, his he, cojones he's a man. <laughs> he became a man. <laughs> he became a young um oh uh, he became a young 
Ian McShane. Oh, yes. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was like, well, I looked over the, the notes for, for Puck and Digital Magic, and I thought, yeah, he's Lovejoy. <laughs> so I came up with this very... Well, I think yes. it was also very reflective of like his cat character because he's mm. he's white cat in the first and then he's this gigantic panther in the second. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Who can't love a man like that? I know. <laughs> so I think I think mine is going to surprise surprise some people. Arthur Books. Uh. I loved. I loved playing Wellington's father in <laughs> uh, in Sins of the Father. Um, I, I I don't know what it was, but I just I finally got to play that that uh, the dastardly the dastardly Bond villain from his chair and the uh, man you've always wanted to the be. man I've always <laughs> wanted to be and and it was uh, I think funny I think my favorite moment is when I'm doing the narration of um, I'm doing the narration and I and I talk about how this uh, this 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 guy is basically watching another agent of of uh, or. Or agent for the House of Usher being electrocuted by, by him, and he goes for his weapon. And Arthur and I had a, and I said something in the narration about Arthur's hand drifting over the control panel, and my line was, "I wouldn't." And I had completely modulated the voice. Someone actually said, "Dear Lord, he's a Dalek." You know, <laughs> people, were, people were claiming that uh, that, that Arthur. I thought he was like an evil Professor X. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he was. He is an evil Professor X, and um, I just I loved. Playing that part, I loved it. So I would say, yeah, he was my favorite. Awesome, KT. Um, see, from I don't know. Um, I really enjoyed being an eleven-year-old choir boy in Half X. <laughs> More to the point, I enjoyed the fact that I could get away with it. <laughs> kind of convincingly, kind of frighteningly. For me, though, it's almost more rewarding. Is I love seeing my characters brought to life by other people. That is. Um, yeah, that is a wonderful feeling, and I can tell I'm more of a playwright than an actor because, like, yeah, I, I enjoy voice acting, and I get a kick out of it, but when someone just has that character, and they bring them to life, and it's perfect, and it's what I had in my head, that thrill, like, that passion I just heard in T's voice right now, I get that all up and down my spine, and for me, I had two characters like that, both voice acted by, by Blythe, my wonderful partner in crime for this kind of thing. Uh, Seraphine, who's, like, this goddess figure in Hapix, she nailed that part. And then in Tales from the Archives, my story, Under Oak Island, um, wow. Anouk Tremblay. Yes. Québécois, Agent of Moose. Agent of Moose. <laughs> Agent of Moose. Um, that kills me. I know. <laughs> the first time she just sat down and she was like, yes. <laughs> oh, she was great. She was great. Um, it, it did help that the role was written for her, but also, yes. <laughs> Which is why uh, my favorite character that the KT plays is is Cath Catherine, the plucky intern in the archives. <laughs> um, I mean, oh, yeah, sure. We had so I enjoy, I enjoy voicing her, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I just want, like, the, the real Canadian accent, real tick dairy. Yeah, I, I just wonder how much acting is in there. I, just... <laughs> I, I want, I want the, I want the short story from KT about Catherine. I want to hear how she, how she takes care of the archives while Wellington and Eliza are away in the states. That's going to be fun. That's going to be. Well, fun. See, I want a story with a nook, um, Catherine and Eliza, mostly because I want the three voices all in the same. Line. Oh dear! Oh dear! I we think, could just all sit down and have tea. I think that's going to be. Cups, I think it's gonna, yeah, I think it's gonna, cups of tea. Oh, I meant. Oh, uh, that might explode the internet. Internet. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Oh man! We'll make it happen. Awesome. Oh, so I'm working on it. Too. I'm working on my camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what do you guys do when you have to warm up for a podcast or for actually recording some narration? <laughs> warm up. That's a good one. <laughs> Uh yeah, I, I don't drink water. I drink I drink a lot. Yeah, I the one thing I I, I learned very very quickly. I uh, um I remember I sat down to do a, a Billy Batting's chapter, and I took a swig of coffee because it was early in the morning. <laughs> and I thought, okay, rule one: no calcium of any kind <laughs> near the desk. Um, so yeah, I just have I just have a big glass of water mm. uh, by the desk. And uh, as far as as far as warming up, sometimes if it's a really tricky, if, if it if I I'll, I'll just do a, a cold reading. But if um if it winds up being that I'm I'm just constantly hitting you know hitting the clicker as I as I as I do, then I go okay, I gotta stop recording and I gotta, <laughs> I, gotta I just gotta read this sucker. And um I will usually read it to myself. 
Um, if if I have to do a, a, an open an out, out open read, I'll go ahead and do that, and then I'll go back and I'll record. Mm -hmm. But only if I feel like I can't get a get a grasp of the of the narration. Mm. I mean, I like I like to read it, but I also if I'm feeling like my my vo voice is like very I haven't been yelling at you en enough during the day to warm it up. <laughs> I, do, I, I I do humming and stuff to try and get it get it ready to go. Uh, lots of water. And a cat. You've got to have a cat yeah. sitting you, watching you. This is when I wish we really had the camera. <laughs> I wish I had the camera. Yeah, they're both asleep. Uh, I hear your voice, Canadian. I <laughs> miss my Canadian. His little toes are curling. You I, like, want, oh, I, I, oh. want to, I want to shed more stuff. More smart or shit. <laughs> she needs love. We will take her some at Balticon, we'll, Sebastian. We'll, 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 yes, yes she'll all come to Balticon and be presented with a pile of cat hair. <laughs> <laughs> I made this for you. Ball, I bought a ball of love. <laughs> I made this. <laughs> I made this. Yes, it's required to have a podcasting animal. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> well, I yeah, I, my dog would, would be... Mom, yeah. I wanna I, I wanna type on the keyboard. What are you doing? I well sometimes know. the cats do go Yeah. <laughs> start up conversations and something. You're like, shut up Which does they don't seem to know what that means. No. Funny that. Yeah. I don't have a podcasting animal. I do um. have water. <laughs> the brewery. The brewery logo. That looks suspiciously like a uh, mason jar. It does, but it has the brewery logo. So. Oh, it's got a handle, so that's awesome. It's like so a classy mason. Oh, um, you, yeah. you guys should see mine. <laughs> Is it on a stand like a wine glass? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I have six cool. of them. It's a mason jar wine glass. I've seen yeah. those. I've almost got you one. I know. I haven't seen those. Oh, yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> we'll get you one next we'll time. We'll get you one next time. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Stop on you two. We were just talking about how nice you are. Now you start off a fist fight. That's why they started up a fist fight. <laughs> it's right. Um, yeah, for me, if my voice is acting weird, like when I'm trying to just get into read, I'm I sing in a choir, hence the choir boy. Um, so like I have some vocal warm ups and stuff from them that mm -hmm. I might do, but only if my voice is really not cooperating. Again, if I'm doing <laughs> a lot, because I got one. Yeah, yes. We noticed. <laughs> I know you did. It's very useful. Oh, that's awesome. So, um, what has been your biggest joy and or challenge of putting Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences together? Hmm. Biggest joy. Take the lead, honey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the the biggest joy for us is is seeing what other people have been doing in our universe, course, yeah. and uh, seeing the places they go, and and the agents they create, and and the, the presumably fun they have, uh, mixing it up in our sandbox. Um, I like. Well, I my particular joy is making sure that there's always a New Zealand story in every season. I I love that you do that because it's so. It, it's very you, and I definitely hear you as soon as I know where in the world we're talking about. <laughs> I've got a couple of uh, collaborators, uh, Dan Rabbits and uh, Grant Stone back in New Zealand, who um, have written a couple of great New Zealand characters uh, in Lachlan King and Barry Ferguson, and uh, they actually end up turning up in book four um, with all of their colonial and we cast, yeah, and we cast them in our in our heads. We cast them uh, just to give you just to give you a visual a visual light. And it just happened it happened it happened when we were we were binge watching uh, the 50th anniversary celebrations of Doctor Who, and I suddenly turned to Pip and I said, I think I've just cast uh, Lachlan and King. So um, uh, Lach uh, Lachlan King would be played by John Pertwee if he were still alive, and Barry Ferguson would be Matt Smith. Because uh, with you the know, excessive hand waving, with the excessive hand waving, and the right, 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 mm. I'm surrendering. Hello, I'm surrendering. And and with that 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 perpetual look on Pertwee's face when he looked at the <sighs> Earthlings, just going, oh, for dear Lord, how thick uh, are you people? <laughs> and and it just it just seemed to be the perfect casting, and it really worked. Um, so so for me, I would say what has been really really fun has been not only. Uh, seeing what, what what people have done with the universe, but being able to not only uh, make what they're doing canon, but interweaving 
those stories into the novels and vice versa. It didn't happen so much in the first book, but in the second... In, 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 in the well, we hadn't done season one. Right, so we, we hadn't done season one. <laughs> By the time season two was rolling around, we were finding ways of, 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 of um, injecting little nods to the podcast. Um, <clears throat> a few Canadian crosses. A few Canadian crosses, as it were. <laughs> and... And uh, and now it's it's what's what's been really amazing is in this season of uh, of Tales from the Archives, with season three now the, uh, the 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 writers of this wave are actually writing about other short stories from Tales from the Archives. There have been several references, several nods to other stories and other cases, mm -hmm. and then with the Ministry Initiative, it's all coming together. So it's really been just a delight to watch this evolve. And then to to go even further with uh, with the ministry protocol, where you know there there were some nods to tales in the archives, some nods to to the to the novels, and I think at one point when we were putting together the protocol, I turned to Pip and I said, you know, this project kind of got away from us because we didn't expect <laughs> this, we didn't expect it to kind of be this organic thing, this organic thing, but but it's it's been it's been a delight to watch. Uh, the biggest challenge, um, mm. I would love to get. Uh, you know some some other some other some other folks involved in uh, in in the ministry in the, in the ministry uh, ministry verse. I'd, I'd love to get a short story from Jeff Vandermeer. I'd love to get a short story from Gail Carriger. The problem is that is is every time I every time I ping them, oh, we're too busy. And <laughs> and I don't I don't question that because we know that happens. we know we know. I mean I I I I was just on a part of a blog meme that Katie got me involved with, and I listed out. Uh, what? Because uh, the first question was, "What are you working on?" And after I listened, everything. To that, I was like, it's like criminy. And so, so yeah, I understand what that means, and I think that's mm -hmm. that's that's the biggest challenge. But at the same time, we've got so many people that want to that want to write in our write in our verse and and uh, and and bring their spin to it. It's 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 been a joy to watch watch evolve. Katie. Um, I kind of feel like the latecomer to the party because I just got involved. Um, but for me, it's really cool that I can be involved now because it's been neat having watched it from the sidelines and watched it as a fan, frankly, unfold through the novels in the first couple seasons of Tale from the Archives. Mm -hmm. um, and then being able to contribute things like Moose. <laughs> like, the back branch of history. Moose! It, which apparently is a thing now. Like that's in the RPG. That is cool. Yes, I made the RPG. That. Yes. I'm gonna yeah. come to Balticon with a moose pin. <laughs> oh my god, where. that should be a thing. If you <laughs> cosplayed, if you pin. cosplayed that as that character, that would be a win. <laughs> moose agent. I one day I'm gonna get live in steampunk, and we're we're gonna have like a steampunk photo shoot. It's gonna be awesome. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's been really cool, just watching it, I guess, from the other side, um, contributing and putting it together. I still I still had a blast the first time I heard that Quebec accent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Norwell fencing. <laughs> oh, man, the first time I spliced the, those two lines together and actually heard it all as one thing, it's like, Narwhal fencing. <laughs> <laughs> I squeed. Very loudly, just like that. Also, with um, Wouldn't Go to Waste, which was a very good story written by Sandra Wickham, mm -hmm. um, that was cool because they brought someone in to do an Irish accent. Ah, yes. You know how that goes, don't you? Don't, yeah, don't, 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 don't yeah. You I, I know quite well how the Irish accent goes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I needed a man. I did that for you for Shock's Troops. That's right, that's right. Yes, but I I did I cannot do an Irish accent, and I'm not a man. <laughs> Damn. And T was kind of busy, so I brought someone else. Coincidentally, Blythe's brother. <laughs> 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 so that's been kind of a joy seeing both Canada and like my world start to interweave with the. I think you've doubled bit. the amount of Canadian content in the. Because do we have a? <laughs> Uh, we have we well we we had stuff with Canadian agents, but we you know we no. had Brand, we had Brandon show up uh, twice in um uh, in in season one. There was a Canadian story in Ministry Protocol, but that was I think that was it. We didn't have any other tales. No, we didn't. We didn't. Yeah. We didn't. So, it's yeah. kind of now like it's, Pips, it's kind of like Pip's New Zealand thing. Just making sure New Zealand's represented and making sure Canada gets, right. gets yeah. its moment. Tales from the archives now with two hundred percent more Canadian yeah. content. Yeah, you're guaranteed. Canadia. <laughs> 
Canuck, Canuck Punk and Kiwi Punk. There you go. <laughs> moose Punk. Yeah, and moose Punk. Yeah, Moose Punk. Moose Punk. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> now we, we look forward to seeing our giant robotic moose overlords <laughs> tromping down from the north. With like flames coming out of their nostrils, <laughs> and the fleur de lis and blazing on their side. But our overlords will all be like, "Oh, hey, is this a good time, eh, for we us can to come take back. over? We can come back if it's no, 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 because because you know? Moose is from Quebec. So oh, okay. that's different. <laughs> that's like, we're gonna make you all speak French, <laughs> and then we're going to do it our way, not the French way. I tell you, freedom fries, and now French fries again. Freedom fries or French fries again? <laughs> no, no, no. They're uh, poutine. Oh, poutine. poutine. No more, no more this, poutine. no more this French fry nonsense. Poutine. 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 I, I would I would convert just for the poutine. <laughs> there you go. We will all welcome our new moose overlords. Fantastic. <laughs> we'll get Thomas Williford of Brute Force onto building one of those. I just finished his giant and robot. And our hot rods will no longer be people like Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise, but instead they'll be Jean Reno. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and so now that no one know. from Quebec will ever read anything I write ever again ah. <laughs> I have the same problem with Australia <laughs> oh, I'm kidding, I like Quebec <laughs> Honestly, she's Quebec. not kidding, she doesn't like Australia so it's a... <laughs> I like parts of Australia <laughs> The civilised parts <laughs> Where were they? Melbourne <laughs> oh, okay, there you go. I, thought, I didn't get a chance to stay in Melbourne very long I it's, a, it. it's a nice city. Actually, no, I'm, I am going to write the story uh, it's set in Australia because we haven't had any Australian steampunk. Right. So it's going to be Eliza and Bruce on their first. Uh, I mean, it's a yeah. I mean, oh, it yeah. sounds cringeworthy, and I look forward to it. Oh, it's I, I can I can give you a spoiler now because I know what the last sentence is going to be. Mm -hmm. As Eliza turned to go, she could feel the relief wash over her. She knew one thing for certain: she would never ever work with that pillock again. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you heard it here first. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yay, I get an exclusive. <laughs> so speaking of exclusives, before we get into plugging all your fabulous projects that are going on, um, I have one last question. Fire away. If you could have any voice actor oh, for your geez. project. Jeez. Oh, any who, voice actor. Who would you choose? Oh, oh I know. Sir Patrick Stewart. Really? Oh, I would have Sir Patrick Stewart. You would Read take Sir me. Patrick over Idris. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Think about that for a second. <laughs> Think about that for a second. Think I'm kind of expecting Idris. The, dul uh, the dulcet tones of Idris Elba reading your books. But he's not from the RSC. No, he's not, but he's Idris freaking Elba. <laughs> hey, hey, look, look. Hand me, hand me, guys. Just hand me, guys. Now I'll, 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 I'll give you, I'll give you a preview. Are you gonna do I'm Idris. serious. I'm, I'm going to do an Idris. I'm going to do both. I'm going to do both. This is how it would go. Okay. okay. Read so the, read the opening scene. So, so Sir Patrick Stewart, Sir Patrick Stewart doing, um, doing, uh, doing Geist. So it'd be <clears throat> Geist, a book of the order, by Philippa Ballantyne, chapter one, the quiet before matins. <laughs> it was a good wet. It was good weather for a riot, or perhaps. That was the one wishful thinking. Deacon Shosha Paris breathed out the last smoke from her cigar, twisted the remains against the stone puppet, and signed and sighed in bottom. Okay, that's Patrick Stewart. Okay, now do it. Just... Elbow will be this. <laughs> Geist, Book of the Order of Philippa Ballantyne. <laughs> Chapter One, The Quiet of my Teens. It was a good weather for a riot. Or perhaps that was only wishful thinking. Deacon Sorcerer Ferris breathed out the last smoke from his cigar, twisted the remains against the stone parapet, and sighed in boredom. Ah, jeez. Can I have both? Can I, do, I have to have, do I have to choose one? Well, it's either that or Jason Statham. <laughs> Guys, Book of the Order, <laughs> Philippa Bannon. No, 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 no. Chapter One. Sorry, Jason. Quiet before I will the watch, I will, I will watch It you. was good weather. For a while, <laughs> I, I enjoy him kicking people in the head. But no, um, uh, well, if I got to watch Idris Elba read my <laughs> book, <laughs> Idris Elba. Fair enough. Sorry, Sir Patrick. Fair enough. Go. All right. Uh, for me, I I, I know. Let me guess. Who? Branner. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's funny you should say Branagh because I was actually thinking Hiddleston. <laughs> I, I I would really like to have Tom Hiddleston because I'd really like to have Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, no, I know. I think I think a lot <laughs> of them. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Captain Obvious. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I I think uh, I think Tom Hiddleston. I mean, I I, I well, uh, first off, I oh, I dig man. the way he handles Shakespeare again. Again, the, the Branagh factor. Um, I, I would love, I would love to hear Branagh read my work. I'd love to hear uh, Hiddleston read my work. Um, but if I had to pick the two, mm. Branagh. Mm. Yeah, but I'd go Branagh because yeah. I, I mean, I love, I love me some Hiddleston, but I've been a Branagh fan longer. That's right. I mean, I didn't watch, I didn't watch Volander for Hiddleston, <laughs> although he was a nice addition. It was Branagh that kept me coming back. Oh wait, no, no, I'm gonna no, I'm gonna pull. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm gonna pull it out of the air. Uh, uh, I, uh, I'm gonna pull it out of the air. No, you know who I want to read my stuff? Mm. Paul freaking McGon. Mm. Paul mm. McGon, my doctor. I want my doctor <laughs> to to be to be the voice. So sorry, Ken. You've been, oh, you've been so used close. To Ken Branagh. He was, was just that getting, close. Then he, he was, was close. he was getting ready to go on a plane. Just you know, but then no. he, you've no, crashed. No, I want my gun. No. I want my gun. Okay. Provided okay. my schedule allows, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to be very firm with mine and Whoa. just pick one. That's what she said. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Um, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Inappropriate. 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 Oh, can I just do a sideline? So I'm I'm reading something of Pips, and I'm reading through, and then there was a line, and I just heard a drop in in my head. Yes, <laughs> I read you. Too. And I noted it. I was like, why did I just hear this drop in? <laughs> in my head. <laughs> Must have been a great line. <laughs> when? Okay, That's Katie. KT, your 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 voice of choice. <laughs> My voice of choice would actually be Jim Carter, who is the guy who plays Carson on Downton Abbey. Oh, well, okay. there you go. He's got the rich, He's deep, the melodious voice. And he would Basically, do it. Everything He's My Voice Does Not Do, his does. Yes, yes. 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 Actually, anyone in a heartbeat. Downton Abbey could read anything. Yeah, that, Maggie, a... Maggie, what about Maggie? Yes, Maggie. Let's get Maggie. <laughs> I would enjoy Maggie for a short story, but for a full novel, I would want. Thank you, and Carson. Yeah. I'll just sit here on the sofa and listen to Carson read me a bedtime I'll just story. Sit on the sofa and listen to Carson <laughs> while I sip my tea properly. <laughs> yes, that's essentially what I'm picturing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very nice. All right. Well, we're at that point in the show where we're going to start winding things down, but. T and Pip, you guys have had a momentous march. So tell us a little bit about what's going on uh, in your world and what project you have just released. We released a book. <laughs> you may have heard of it. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> and what would that book be, Gollum? <laughs> Don's Early Light. <laughs> yeah, Don's Early Light, the third book of the uh, history of peculiar occurrences. It was the it was it was it was named a top pick gold by RT by RT reviews uh, for, and the Library for, Journal for, liked it. And the Library Journal librarians liked, liked us. They really yeah. Liked and uh, we so yeah, libra Library Journal dug us, which was very cool. Uh, and um, we got an audio book that we didn't expect. <laughs> yeah, surprise, surprise. Uh, James, surprise audio. Yeah, surprise audio. Uh, James Langton, who uh, voiced the first two books, who also has a melodious he's British got a accent. Great, great job he does. Um, he came back to do the third book, uh, so we were very pleased to have him on board. So Dawn's Early Lights out. Um, it's out on all formats. It's on audio. It's out. We got in, in a CD. In, in digital. We got it. You can get it in CD if you want. Fourteen one of the, one, CDs one of, those, of James Langton. One of those audio, actual physical yeah. objects. It's and, weird. Uh, which means it'll be a lot easier to find in libraries, which we're very excited about. Uh, let's see what else. So yeah, so we had we had Dawn's Early Light come out. Where the Child came out. Well, yeah, Where the Child came out in print. Uh, I love so. that story. <laughs> well, that was what I was trying to prompt. Uh, that's what I was trying to prompt uh, KT. She listened to the podcast. She had she had two choices oh, of where to go. Yeah. yeah. That, that, she said, intern, I think if, I if you listen to me, intern, that, I will that, guide that you. Podcasting. That was podcasting. I was talking about topics, not <laughs> my university <laughs> education. Her own stuff to you. She should talk about us because we, <laughs> we are her influence. We guide her right, into tea, the heart tea, of darkness. Tea, tea, take a pill. So... <laughs> 
So Dawn's Early Light, it's uh, it's out now. Uh, you can find out more about it at ministrypeculiaroccurrences.com. Which is also where you can fail, find ta- there. fail tongue fail. Ting. Um, t- <laughs> you can f- find tales from the archives on the ministry website as well. Uh, and then there's Weather Child, as we mentioned earlier, uh, which which actually and and Katie was Katie was around to see the sort of the evolution of it happening. Um, KT was sitting around. We were we we laid out Weather Child, which has got to be, in my opinion, the classiest book I've ever read. Very laid deco. Out. And she just she turned to me and she said, "You're really good at this." And <laughs> Pip was like, "We need to share this with the world." And that was how One Stop Writer Shop came to be. Uh, One which, Stop, we, which we decided March was not busy enough. So we launched no. a business. We launched a business <laughs> called One Stop Writer Shop at onestopwritershop.com. Uh, we we it's basically a hub. For freelancers. Yeah, for freelancers. So if you want KT to edit your book, she will. If you want Pip to convert your book for ebook and get it ready for ebooks, she will. If you want me to lay it out uh, in print, I will uh, for a fee. And <laughs> not for love. Not for love, but for money. And <laughs> yeah. if you want us to do audiobooks, if you want us to do audiobooks, we will, uh, we will do audiobooks. If you want to have you. someone like a New Zealander read it. Or if you want me to read it, it's fine. Either way, you want a regular person to you read want, it. You want, you want you want an American to read it. Then America, yeah, America. Um, I can read it in my New Jersey accent. Oh, that would, that would yeah, Jersey. It's a, it's a very short book then. Where the child? Where the what a child? By Where Philippa the... Ballantyne. <laughs> With additional smoothies by Tony. Okay. So so yeah. So that's onestopwritershop.com. And you actually can keep up on where we're going to be next and what we're up to and what we're doing at our podcast, which Katie has been a guest on several times. It's called The Shared Desk, and that's at thesharedesk.com. I think that covers it. I think we covered it. Yeah. Awesome. KT. Is it my turn? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Wake up, KT. You're up. (laughs) Um... A lot, yeah. So I'm in the one stop writer shop as well as an editor because they turned to me and said, "Hey, you're good at this editing thing. <laughs> Do it." Um, yeah. So one stop writer shop dot com. You can email me directly at katbrisky at one stop writer shop dot com. Um, I have an opera coming out in May. That's kind of my thing that I'm turning my attention towards. Um, I was commissioned by the Canadian Children's Opera Company to write them a libretto. So Yay! I did not do the music because I can't write music. <laughs> uh, but I wrote all of the words in the opera. Oh, good. Oh, when, yes. when, when's that coming out? What, what, uh, when that is it? Comes t- out like three days after Balticon. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, I come home and then the opera. Because <laughs> opera. Because opera. You yeah, have a knack for doing opera. that. I wasn't going to be busy enough. You um, have a knack for doing that, KT. You realize, you, I mean, she, she gets off the plane from New Zealand, and then she's back on the plane again and going to, going to Dragon Con because, you know... Jet lag. <laughs> yeah, and then I came back from Stone Coast because I'm also doing my MFA right now. I turned around and came back to Virginia. <laughs> okay. Ow, that's hurting my head. Let, let me pause real quick. Katie, are you getting um, credit for being an intern for these guys? No. <laughs> so Just you're doing out food. of pure love for them? She Pretty gets, much. She, her credit is best love. <laughs> She's You'll her. get fur. I Apparently at Balticon, <laughs> I'm getting a handful of fur. You're getting a ball of fur, and you're going to get a giant hug from me because I'm so excited to meet you. <laughs> yeah, a so ball basically, of love. T, T and Pip are the only ones for whom I will work for pure love. Um, that being said, I also do <laughs> pay. <laughs> well, I'm doing, another, I'm doing another internship at the moment as well. Um, I'm also writing a text-based interactive online game. Which Ooh, is, how's that going? That's going really well. I'm, I'm getting close to being done. Woo-hoo. It would be nice to have that off my plate. Um, I'm having a lot of fun, but it's just very time-consuming. I'm doing my MFA at Stone Coast, and also I run the blog of the Black Creek Historic Brewery. So Black and that Creek, is? Uh, Black Creek Brewery at word, dot .wordpress.com. Um, By the way, you get paid in beer as well. Don't <laughs> remember, Brisky. I took you to several breweries while you were here. So I do get off. paid. I count beer as love. <laughs> That's true. It is beer and fur. <laughs> beer and fur <laughs> and, fur <laughs> and <laughs> love. And I would not have it any other way. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Well, I want to thank my wonderful guests for being with us uh, tonight. And. For now, I am going to wrap things up. If you have any other suggestions on voice actors that I should review or have on the show, please leave a message in the 
uh, comments section. And uh, until the next time, find out more information about this show and all of our authors. I'm going to have their links on my blog at gypsylaura.com. Yay, ding. <laughs> ding. <laughs> I was going for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> so thank you guys for being with us tonight, and I will see you next time here in the attic.